Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. That is Jack. I am Connor. This is the 45 with our look at match week eight in the Premier League. Uh, five matches and a bonus. And we will start with the bonus. Southampton, top of the league. Yeah, by virtue they're doing great. <laughs> their 2-0 win over Newcastle. Uh, they sit top of the league for the first time uh, in their in the Premier League era. Southampton mm -hmm. been the first. Yeah, we um, talked a lot. Yeah, we talked last week. They didn't have Danny Ings for today's game against Newcastle. We said, oh, probably won't, they probably won't get the three points. Probably won't do that well. They did. 2-0. Controlled Newcastle. They showed that they're beyond just a one-man one man band. So they're uh, doing, doing great, um, both on the field and on with their Twitter interactions as well. Yeah, their, their social media manager on fire today. Stop the count. Uh, if they wanted to stop the season right now, they would win the league. Um, making fun, clearly, of the election that is going on in the United States right now. Or, excuse me, the counting that's going on in the United yes. States right now. Yes. Uh, but it's absolute Twitter wizardry from Southampton Football Club. Very fun to see. So congratulations to them. Again, doing well. We will uh, move on to the first match that we're going to look at this weekend. Uh, Everton and Sheffield United. Everton fifth on 13. They got those 13 from the first eight matches of the season. Or excuse me, first five matches of the season. Uh, and now looking to avoid a uh, third loss in a row. Meanwhile, United, this could be a mi make or break match for mm -hmm. Solskjaer coming off of that kind of a bad loss against uh, Bissaksha here in the Champions League in Istanbul this week. They just didn't look very good. Yeah, this is, we, we've talked about this. This is probably the biggest moment that he could get fired. There's been several questionable moments under his tenure as Manchester United manager. This is the one where if they fail to get a result here, they may really, he may actually get fired. Going in, into an international break gives you a chance, say you hire Pochettino, Allegri, whoever you decide is your next manager. They have a good amount of time to get embedded with the squad. And it'd be, because you are bottom half of the table, 15th potentially lower with just seven points, maybe even eight from seven games. So it's unacceptable for Manchester United, especially off of the, the Istanbul results. Maybe if he had lost this and said, oh, well, I, we're nine for nine in the Champions League, that's my argument. Maybe that was an argument that existed. That's out the window now. So for Manchester United, the fire is completely on. So, so it's like it's going to question our tweet that we showed last week where when uh, all these un jobs under question, they play like prime Barcelona under Guardiola. If they play like that again against Everton, maybe he'll save his job again. But... Looking at Everton, who they're bringing back, James, Coleman, Holgate's back as well, Dinier's back from suspension. There's a lot of guys to come back, especially after a poor showing the last two weeks. So they'll be under fire to try and bounce back after consecutive losses. So this is going to be a great one because it's two teams who have been kind of performing poorly, and you expect one of them has to bounce back up now. Next up, Chelsea and Sheffield United. Mendy has been spectacular for Chelsea. A lot of clean sheets. And that does not bode well for Sheffield United, who are a club who struggle, struggle, mm -hmm. struggle to score. And mm -hmm. they need to get out of the basement. Don't see it happening this weekend. Yeah, we talk about it. They are better than where they currently are. They are not the worst team in the Premier League, not by a long margin. They just have not gotten the results where they should have. And now when you have a match against Chelsea, away from home, who have been good defensively, and even without Pulisic because of a hamstring injury and Kai Havertz due to a COVID test, you still expect Chelsea to score well against them, and considering how well Mendy has done for them in the defensive portion, the Sheffield United have a lot of questions, a lot of difficulty trying to break this team down. Then again, this is a 2020-2021 Premier League season. We have seen nothing normal at all this year. So it wouldn't surprise us if Sheffield United broke their goal-scoring duck and upset Chelsea away from them. It also wouldn't be atypical of Chelsea to perform very well and then be incredibly inconsistent in, in a future match. So this one, I think, I think, I think the, the edge does go to Chelsea. But I, I keep them every week I'm wondering, is this the week where Sheffield United kick into gear? Is this the week? Is this the week? Not sure if it's this one just yet, but... It's starting to get a bit into the season, so there are some worrying signs of not able to buck the trend pretty soon. There were, Premier League.com provided this goofy statistic where United are one of four clubs to have won more matches against Chelsea than they've lost. They've won four, they've lost three, along with Oldham Athletic, <laughs> Liverpool, and Arsenal. The How great Oldham football Athletic institution <laughs> of Oldham <laughs> Athletic. Uh, Oldham Athletic gets in that list is interesting. Next up... 
Uh, Leicester hosting Wolves. On a weekend where you have Everton playing United, Liverpool playing Manchester City, this is the lone top six matchup. Not what we would have expected, but two teams that are playing very, very well. We talk about Wolves a lot. Leicester City are the only club so far with five wins uh, in, in league play. And this game is wide open. This could be like a 5-3. It could be a 1-0. We have no way of knowing where this thing is going to go. Uh, this is pretty. Uh, this is a tough one to predict. Yeah, I, I think that both these teams are playing very well, as you, as you mentioned. So Leicester have been a... It's been interesting for me because I, I think that they've been playing above their weight so far this season. So whether or not they'll come back down to what I expect their earth to be is what, what remains to be seen. Vardy's been on, on fire. Seven goals for them so far this season. He may struggle a bit in this match because I think Wolves are a bit more defensively compact. They're going to sit a bit deeper than, than other teams would. So his ability to be lethal on the counter. And he's amongst the guys where if he gets one-on-one with the goalkeeper you expect it to go in nine times out of ten because he's so clinical, so good when the match is moving that fast. So in terms of style, if Tielemans and Madison are able to be their, at their creative best, they won't struggle against a defensively solid Wolves team. Um, and Wolves, I think they've also been really overperforming. I believe that no other team has performed better than their XG more than Wolves have because they've just been able to convert low-quality chances into actual goals and get wins in matches where they typically wouldn't. So... Again, it's it's kind of the opposite of the Everton Man United game where it was two teams who were underperforming. These are two teams who are overperforming. So I think one of them will have to say, okay, we are the real ones. We are, we are not a mirage. We are the true top six dog. Um, and it should be an interesting match for sure. i probably give the nod to Leicester here. I think they have, just based on their performance from last year, they're not a fluke. They're a good side. Rodgers has them well-coordinated. And to your point, Right now, Vardy is on fire, but a lot of that does come down to the pace that he provides to be able to blitz the mm-hmm. back line on the breakaway. And I don't—I agree. I, I think it's going to be a little bit more difficult the way Wolves may pack it in a little bit. They'll mm-hmm. still be able to, to move forward, but they are a little bit tighter defensively than most of the clubs Leicester have played. Next up, uh, Man City and Liverpool. Is it too early to call it a title decider? City are right at that 10th spot on 11 points. Uh, Liverpool second now behind Southampton, as we mentioned, uh, on 16. Um, one game behind, obviously. But I Liverpool haven't looked that great yet. They're top of the league, or, you know, joint top of the league, or right behind Southampton. Mm-hmm. And City have looked equally not all that great, but they just don't have the, res- the results that Liverpool have so far. So these are two yeah. teams not playing well, but with completely different results. Yeah, I think title decider, it would be very early to call it a title decider for, for starters. But if Liverpool were to win this match away from home, something they have, they struggled with the Eddie had in the Premier League over past years. So if they were able to get a win here, it wouldn't bury Man City's title chances, but it would really make it difficult. They'd be eight points behind. Um, and they'd even have, they still have the game in hand, but it would be a big s- s- tempo setter that even without Virgil van Dijk, even without Fabinho, even without Thiago Alcantara, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, not quite as good as them, but still missing for them as well, they're still able to dominate against a very good side. So Man City, they also don't have Aguero, Fernandinho, and Mendy. So it's two sides who are not at their best, not at their fittest, and yet they're the two best teams in England. I think it has to be said. When, this ma- when the season comes down to it, I think both of us would expect it to be Man City, Liverpool, one of those two, in any order, one, two, because they have so much talent, they're so tactically dominant. And so this match, I think, could be gr- a great one on Sunday. And if Liverpool are able to do this w- without their wealth of talent that they have and able to maybe get a good defensive showing like they have in several of the past few games, it should be great. The big question mark I have for Liverpool is Diego Diego Jota or Roberto Firmino. Firmino, I think, is better in the pressing game, he's better at linking the play, and he brings more out of Salah and Mane. But he's out of form, woefully. Yota just had a hat-trick in the Champions League. He's got three goals off of the substitute bench, more than anybody else in the league. So that's the big question, right? Before the match, who, who's decided to go there? Maybe you do both of them, and you completely throw caution to the wind, and you go for a 5-4 match. I don't know. That'd be very exciting to see. Um, well, I mean, I that's know. what they would... I think that's probably what they end up doing. We talked about it earlier in the week after that Champions League destruction that they mm-hmm. put on Atlanta. I mean, they looked unbelievable. It's their best performance of the year. Mm-hmm. And you play 
Firmino almost in the number ten behind, you know, right behind the that front three. You put then mm-hmm. you put Yoda at the tip, and it, I mean that would just be ridiculous. You'd be giving up a lot on the midfield, right? Mm-hmm. Especially and when you're defensively as weak as Liverpool are right now with no Van Dijk, you'd have to play a double pivot in front of that back line, mm-hmm. and one of them can't be Fabinho because he's not healthy. So yeah, exactly. So uh, this is a match that. Guardiola struggles against Klopp. Klopp's beat him eight times. No other managers beat him more times. And also, Liverpool struggle um, away at City. Last three matches, aggregate score of 11-1 in favor of Manchester City. So, this is going to be a great one. Always tactically great matches between them. And even though it's not the, like, Leicester and Wolves, where it's the two top six teams in the literal table positions, these are the two best teams in England. So, it's always going to be a great match, as always. Last of our five this weekend, Arsenal home to Villa. Um, Villa coming off of a strange performance. They were down 4-1, came back 4-3. Um, Arsenal looking very good in the midfield, much more solid defensively. So I do think this is going to be one of those matches. It is going to be a fight in the midfield that's going to see who can create the most chances and who can protect their back line the best. Yes. Uh, Thomas Partey has made a great transition to English football. Um, I think we all expected that. He plays a position that... Not that it's easy to make a transition, but he all the qualities he had would easily translate. He's good at progressing the ball. He's good at winning the ball back. He's a great positionally solid defensive midfielder. So he's done a great job for them. Grealish has been on fire. We've talked about how good he is. Eight um, total goal involvements. It's exactly. Crazy. McGinn has been doing great as well. Douglas Luiz. Um, I like him a lot. And David Luiz is back fit for Arsenal. Um, it's going to be a good game. This has been a, a great weekend of games. We talked about it before recording. No offense to Burnley Brighton fans, but because there's so many great games, we had to see Burnley versus Brighton, which is not known as a traditionally world class open game and a finish nil nil. Not a barn burner. Not, not a barn burner. But this could be a barn burner, maybe. Um, Arsenal are very good defensively, had a 1 0 win over Manchester United um, last weekend. And Aston Villa need want a result. They started off the season tremendously, but they've lost two on the bounce after conceding a lot of goals. So Arsenal probably won't go at them as hard, potentially, as their last two opponents have, Southampton and Leeds. Um, and they're going to have a harder challenge of breaking them down, I think. So it's going to be an interesting clash of, of, of problems for Aston Villa to deal with, as well as Arsenal. They are tied on points right now, eighth to Arsenal on goal difference, ninth for Villa. One of them is going to, I mean, unless you come out with a draw, I don't see that happening. I do probably see Arsenal taking the full points here, but uh, draw wouldn't surprise me, I think, I, you know, and keep them both tight in that mid table on 13 points, but we <laughs> shall see. That'll do it for us for uh, our look at week eight. Uh, please let us know what you think in the comments. Please subscribe, like what you see. Look for us on the Twitter at the 45. Take care now.